Hey guys, thanks for sticking around. Is everybody enjoying their vegan cake? <laughs> All I can hear is chewing, so I'll take that as a yes. So I've been involved in advocacy for a few years now, and you can probably guess from this what uh, is one of my most uh, passion areas of advocacy at the moment. Um, I volunteer at a Friend Animal Sanctuary, which is about an hour to the northeast of here. And um, really, I'm just going to talk, my talk's going to be a bit shorter, maybe about 10 minutes, and just basically share a few quick stories of the animals, and then we'll get into our final talk of the evening. So with that, I just want to go over some of the benefits of sanctuaries themselves, and probably the biggest thing is they provide a home to the, the animals that are there. You know, there's about 200 residents and uh, friend at the moment, and those animals wouldn't be here if it wasn't for friend. And, you know, it's great to, to come and connect with the animals and really see the, them for the individuals that they are. Um, how many people here have actually been to an animal sanctuary, just out of curiosity? All right, so a bit over half, that's great. So I think you might be able to resonate with some of the, the things up here. And one of the big things I know for me is it uh, helps recharge my vegan batteries. And since it seems like a very active group here going to sanctuaries, I'd really encourage you to um, take videos and just show the interactions with the animals there because not everybody can get out to an animal sanctuary. So if you're able to even, you'd be amazed, maybe a 30 second clip of a pig getting a belly rub will really um, get a really strong reaction. So just good to keep that in mind too. So with that, um, I'd just like to share a few um, quick stories of a few of the animals there. Uh, when I first started volunteering at Friend, maybe about six months ago, we took in about a dozen um, baby turkeys. Who here has interacted with a baby turkey? All right, this is probably a disproportionate audience. Most audiences are probably gonna be no hands going up, but they are just absolutely incredible. I don't know why, but it took me a while to kind of connect with birds. And these guys, um, you just kneel down and they run over to you and so happy to see you. And they look quite small, pecking at the ground. And then all of a sudden, they stretch out their neck and they're just as tall as you are when you're kneeling down looking at you eye to eye, turning the head and studying you. Fascinating experience. And the thing I would say for those who go to sanctuaries, I would encourage you to let the animals come to you because they're not there necessarily for our entertainment. And it also creates a much more genuine interaction. So one of the things I started doing is um, just sitting on the ground and letting them come over to me. And one in particular would start coming over and, and crawling onto my lap. They would crawl into my arms and start to close their eyes and their eyes would start to flick and it wasn't until um, a bit after this I researched it and turkeys can experience REM sleep which is uh, associated with dreaming. So there's strong evidence that there's turkey dreams. I have no idea what turkeys dream about, but there you go. And just here in the um, bottom right hand corner here, this is a really special moment I witnessed. I've been working closely with animals for about two years and they just can continue to amaze me. This was um, during a sunset one night and I couldn't believe my eyes that literally two of the turkeys snuggled up next to each other and before I knew it, they were reaching their wing around the turkey next to them, pulling them into them and watching the sunset together. So that was a really powerful thing to, to watch. Now, if you've heard of Friend, has anybody heard of Rosie from Friend? A few? Now, Rosie's particularly special because she recently celebrated her 20th birthday. Now, this is something that's unfortunately quite rare um, for, for, uh, for cows. And somebody else who volunteers at Friend basically said to me, you know, you should go spend some time with Rosie. She's pretty special. And I hadn't really had many interactions with the cows. They pretty much just ignored me up until then. So I took my book and I went and sat in the field and she just started sniffing me and we started to engage and I, there started to be a bit of uh, trust built. And I think cows get a hard name because I think people think they're bigger than us and they could hurt us. And my experience is it couldn't be further from the truth. Um, to me, they're just gentle giants and, and really careful. And, in this interaction with Rosie, she was starting to lean over towards me and just one of the most amazing um, experiences I've had, she started to lean her head more and more towards me, but then would back away, careful not to hurt me. And then eventually, she would start to lean her head down and she laid her head into my lap. And 
My dog at home will just throw his weight against you, but Rosie, not so much. She gradually increased the weight of her head, and I don't know if you've ever had a cow lay their head on your lap. They're actually quite heavy. But she, she's just very gentle about it, gradually increasing the weight, and eventually she completely relaxed into me. And as I was stroking the top of her head, her eyes began to gradually close, and we just had a really nice moment, the two of us. Ruby is also one of my, um, I have a lot of favorites at Friend, but when I first um, started, one of the um, things I did was um, cleaning out the pig's enclosure and just picking out avocado stones, and I didn't know who she was at the time, but she came over every five or ten minutes, gave me a few happy grunts, and would lay down next to me, beckoning for a belly rub, and she continued to do this for an hour or two, and um, it, it took, takes a while to clean up avocado stones, and some of the other stuff you might expect to find in a, a pig enclosure. And she's a lot like a lot of the pigs there. You know, she enjoys scratching herself against a tree and sitting in the sunshine. And more recently, she started to uh, um, kind of get her personality and our relationship started to grow more and more. And she would start to look up at me and you can just see she gets a bit of a gleam in her eye. And then we start to play. Now I know what you're thinking. How does a pig play with a person? I would have wanted the same thing. And basically what this consists of, she looks up at me, gets this cheeky grin, and then runs over and starts lifting my legs up with her snout. And I jump away and then run to the other side, and she, she come here and she run back to me. And it seems pretty simple, but after five or 10 minutes, I was absolutely knackered. <laughs> Fortunately, Ruby was too. And Later on, I walked around and saw her sleeping nose to nose with some mates here. I think we were equally shattered from that experience. And the last animal I'd like to talk to about tonight, you can see here with a um, bit of dark bit around her face, is, is Poppy. Now, Poppy's story is a bit different. Friend got a call from someone that said there's an article in a local newspaper that a pig had been found, but they hadn't been found just anywhere. They were found outside the slaughterhouse. Now they looked into it and they realized that no one else was keeping pigs. So it was confirmed that Poppy definitely came from the slaughterhouse. And the, the thing is, there's a, a law that basically says slaughterhouses aren't allowed to let animals escape. So if they claimed her back, they would have been admitting they broke the law. So they couldn't do that. So fortunately, Friend was able to take her in and she is just the sweetest girl. She's happy to interact. And this, these are some pictures of her when she was first taken in and lay in the sun. And as you can see here, she is uh, the furthest from a species you can get. She loves to curl up with, with all the different animals here. The reason to tell these stories about the animals tonight is to help build a case. Animals are individuals and they each have their own unique personalities. Their lives are irreplaceable. And you know, our animal cousins are, they experience life and because of that, they're a subject of life. They're not a means to an end, they're an end in themselves. They experience emotions such as happiness, sadness, and fear, and they have all kinds of different interests. Now, you've probably heard a lot of different people talking about animal rights, and the reason for that is a right's really just a way of protecting those interests. And for the animals that are already here, probably one of the strongest interests is that interest in living. There's no biological requirement for us to eat or use animals. So why would we pay others to needlessly breed and kill them if we don't have to? and it violates the rights of the process. Yesterday I was clever, so I wanted to change the world. Today I am wise, so I am changing myself. Thank you for being part of that change.